Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. I am so glad that you are joining us today. I have one of my favorite people in the entire world on with us, Barbara Hearn, who is a director with Allianz. I'm going to tell you that she has taught me everything that I need to know about selling travel insurance. We met probably right beginning of my journey, I would say five years, and I started quickly moving into that uh, luxury space and also serving a lot of older clientele who had pre-existing conditions and um, other little nuances. And of course, I was selling a lot of the Caribbean at the time, which, you know, we have those whole hurricane issues. <laughs> so I am so excited to have you here today. Yeah. Welcome, Barbara. Well, I'm excited to be here and I have <laughs> never done a Facebook Live. So this is... Ah, well, let's see. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and monitor uh, Facebook Live and also I will monitor <laughs> the chat for those of... Uh, for those of you who are joining us via Zoom. Um, but just tell us a little bit about yourself because we are, yes. we serve travel agents from all different consortia and host agencies. So you may not be somebody's uh, point of contact, but mm -hmm. at least just give us some background about who you are, how long you've been in the space and a little bit uh, about Allianz. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I will be celebrating 20 years with Allianz in April, which blows my mind. Uh, before that, I had been working for Rail Europe. I do love trains. And I do love France. Um, before Rail Europe, I had spent many years as the executive director of the French American Chamber of Commerce in Los Angeles, where I'm based. So I'm a U.S. and a French citizen, um, uh, lived in Paris for a year, have traveled a lot through Europe, have discovered Asia right before COVID hit. And thankfully, because I relived my Mekong Delta trip many times in my mind as I was stuck at home um, and back to France and Spain last summer and look into the next one. So love travel have become really passionate about protecting your trip. So um, I love to do training sessions and really see the light bulb go off. Allianz is a huge company, but the nice thing is it's ginormous. So with really solid financials and well diversified, which was really important during COVID because our travel division was not helping support the company, but the annuities, PIMCO mutual funds, which we own, the life insurance, all of those things were moving along fine. So um, it's a an old company started in 1880 in Berlin. Oh. Um, our claim to fame is that Allianz actually insured the Wright brothers when they were learning how to fly a plane for an extended period of time. And that's kind of what insurance is about. They knew they were doing something that had risk associated with it. They wanted somebody to share that risk with them. And that's what an insurance company does. Well, I want to know, uh, I want <clears throat> actually, yeah, I want everyone to know uh, the three key things that we should understand about third party travel insurance. Absolutely. <clears throat> Sorry. So third party insurance means you're going right with the insurance company. Um, there is Allianz, there is Travel Guard, Travel X, Travel Insured, <clears throat> excuse me, Generali. Um, there are a lot of travel insurance companies out there. Those are kind of the, the main ones, oh, Arch Rome, right, that I run into. I just did a travel insurance panel last week that was, that was fun with five of us there, just sharing tips and, and best practices. So, um, what, Three main differences would be, first of all, the level of coverage will likely be much higher with a third party company like Allianz for the benefits. What is your medical benefit? What is your medical trans, your emergency medical transportation benefit? Um, with the mass market uh, suppliers out there, those are likely going to be low. 
Secondly, we have what we call primary, some people call it first payer insurance for medical claims. So when there is a medical issue, um, we are there with our emergency medical benefits that are primary, no deductible. So we are first in line waiting to be involved. So when we um, learn of an issue, say the gentleman that was up in the hinterlands of Canada recently and had an ATV accident, we will become involved with our medical and medical transportation benefits, get them from where they are, however we need to, to the nearest appropriate hospital. So that's another point, appropriate, vetted, where we have gone and visited facilities and rated them so that when a call comes in, we know not only where is the nearest hospital, where's the nearest appropriate hospital for this particular issue. And that's where we will transport the person. We will make a payment guarantee saying, this is our insured, we are financially responsible, please admit them without their having to take out a credit card. Some countries make you take out a credit card to be admitted to, including to emergency room for care. Um, we will say, mm, this is our insured. And then of course, have them admitted, monitor their care, offer to pay that insurance um, when they're being discharged and then bring them back to their destination of choice in the United States. That whole part is huge, mm -hmm. um, very comprehensive. And the amount of coverage and the fact that it's primary and the prepayments and the payment offer, all of that is going above and beyond what you will see with your the other companies that the, the vendors tend to use. And third, the commissions, hello, <laughs> the commissions we pay are, gosh, 25% for our most popular plan for the most part, up to 35% for the luxury plan, 20% um, for our annual plans. That's still two, two and three times the commission that you will be earning when you sell the insurance through a supplier. And we offer commission protection so that you've worked hard booking this trip. Think of the amount of hours you can spend researching destinations and you wanna do the best for your client. Um, we will be there in case the client has to cancel, cancel the trip and your commission is recalled. Mm -hmm. So commission protection on our main plans if a trip is canceled after final payment and for a covered reason. Once that claim has been paid, you file a claim with us and we make you whole for that lost commission as long as it was a commission of 20% or less. So the primary, the um, level of coverage, the vetting, the direct payments and the commissions, I would say those are three pretty big ones. You know, I'm probably going to go completely out of order because... <laughs> You know, I had this whole list of questions that I wanted to talk to you about, but I wanted to touch on something that is so mm -hmm. important, the vetted hospitals and the the uh, travel smart mm -hmm. app for your customers. Oh my gosh. If yes. you are already selling Allianz, but you don't know about this app, the really cool thing is your clients will download the app. And if they have an emergency while traveling, they can communicate and stop me if I'm not communicating this correctly, that you can communicate with Allianz. You mm -hmm. can see all of the vetted hospitals yep. in your particular area. Also, the de delays, they can plug in their policy number for the travel delays and they get reimbursed up to a certain amount automatically. Right. Yeah, but the medical piece of this is so, so huge. Yeah. And having this app on your phone will help your customers. I mean, I've actually had to use Allianz twice for myself while traveling. So, <laughs> no, no, no. um, <laughs> love, love, love that they are vetted and they're readily available. Yeah. So it takes just 15 to 20 seconds to download it from Google Play or the App Store. And you don't have to have an Allianz policy to use Travel Smart. 
So um, it can, if, if for some reason you didn't ensure your trip with us um, this particular time, it's still there with, so you can't really call us for assistance because you don't have a policy, but um, at the bottom of the screen, it's kind of small. There's a little, there's a little unique, you want to call us, um, but you can click on, I need help. And that will, that's where the hospitals will load around you with a blue, uh, a gold star next to those we have visited, vetted, and approve of due to their standard of care. It's not like they're on a network with us or anything. You can go to any hospital. It's just that we give you a look at a few hospitals that are vetted. If they don't have a gold star, it doesn't necessarily mean they're bad, but we'll go visit a certain number at destinations just to, to have those to uh, turn to. And a pharmaceutical dictionary, maybe Lipitor is not called Lipitor in Greece and you forgot your medication at home. Um, it'll tell you, it'll give you the pharmaceutical name of the plan. And then the other thing that I think is really important and I had never thought about, I did a lot of vacation home rentals when, when my children were younger because I could make breakfast, I could put my ties in the blender, you know, save some money um, on, on that. Well, there is um, here on the home screen now, it looks a little bit different now, um, but the same basics. There is something, local emergency numbers, when you change countries, it will follow you and you'll have on your home screen, the local police, paramedics, ambulance, and the nearest US embassy. What if you are renting a home and you don't have a front desk and there's a medical emergency or a safety issue and you say, holy moly, I don't know what 911 is in Costa Rica this will have it right there for you. So I really encourage everyone to put Travel Smart on their phone. Um, and hopefully that'll lead you to eventually thinking of Allianz for your insurance. So here's something that you taught me very early on. Um, and I will get back to, we do have a question over in the Facebook group, but I don't want to leave this topic. When I first started traveling, uh, selling travel, I was doing a lot of Caribbean stuff. And I found that customers would say, well, I'm just going to the Caribbean. I don't really need travel insurance because I'm so close to home. And when I had ICs, and I don't know if you remember back then, but I brought you in to do training for our company and really dive deep into uh, things beyond the selling aspect. One of the things you said to me, and I'll never forget it, is there are two places in the world where you absolutely want to have travel insurance. And one of them was the Caribbean. Yes. Because, and I'll let you talk to that. Oh, sure, sure. The Caribbean and Mexico. Mm -hmm. Um, the Caribbean, the hospitals in the Caribbean for the most part are not, um, hospitals that we necessarily want you in for a long period of time. So the vetting is important to know which of the hospitals are, are better and are able to provide American style healthcare. Mm -hmm. Um, once you're stable, we can bring you back to the United States. Mm -hmm. So we'll try to get you stabilized as soon as possible in order to, to bring you back. Mm -hmm. um, the other one is Mexico, because we do see the requirement to pay to be admitted for care quite often. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing Mexico know that people have travel insurance likely. And so we're seeing costs that are commensurate to care in the United States. And the bill goes up very quickly. Mm -hmm. So those are two places that I would not go without a travel insurance policy. I, I agree. And I never forgot that. And when we got sick on that cruise, my daughter and I, we were so, so sick. And they wanted to for me to admit her into the Caribbean hospital. We got straight home um, because the facilities 
just aren't the same as what we have here in the U.S. And of course, even in the U.S., you really don't want to be in the hospital. That's where you catch things. Um, it doesn't really matter even if you're in the U.S. So you want to obviously um, have coverage. The other thing too is hurricanes. Mm -hmm. uh, this has always been such a big question in the minds of travel advisors. And there are some nuances with some of the Allianz policies. Mm -hmm. Can you, and, and honestly, I don't really sell the Caribbean much anymore. So I'm not up to date on how your coverages work. Right. With that, can you talk to us about yeah. that? Yeah, well, there are hurricanes or their equivalent all over the world, whether mm -hmm. it's a typhoon or mm -hmm. however else it's called. Um, but the coverage is, is a coverage we call severe weather. So severe weather, um, first of all, you need to have purchased your policy before the storm is named. Once that store is storm is named, it's a known event. Mm -hmm. Is insurance to cover known events? Nope, it's not. It's to cover the unforeseen and unexpected. That's the mantra with insurance. So you need to buy your policy early to have coverage for that issue. When the storm does reach hurricane status, our high-end plan um, well, all of our plans provide coverage. As soon as the airport shuts down mm -hmm. or the destination becomes uninhabitable. So that would be the criteria for the severe weather benefit. And the premier level, level plan that we have, it could be called premier, it could be called latitude. Um, that plan has 24 hour advance ability to cancel the trip once your destination is under a hurricane warning. Wow. So that hurricane warning will can allow people on the West Coast, for example, or in the Midwest to avoid flying to Florida or Texas mm -hmm. in order to get on their, their cruise, even though they know that there are things brewing in the Caribbean 24 hours before departure, those policyholders can cancel their trip whereas others do have to wait until the, the destination's airport closes or it becomes uninhabitable to cancel the trip. So Clara wants to know, what is the date timeline to purchase for coverages? Absolutely. So there is time sensitivity to travel insurance. All travel insurance policies, <laughs> excuse me, will have time sensitivity for at least two out of the three things we do. So 14 days, 15, 21 days, that tends to be the general window of time sensitivity. What do I mean? Within, within 14, 15, 21 days of initial trip payment. That's when the clock starts ticking on purchasing travel insurance with full coverage. What is sensitive to that time frame? Supplier default coverage. So the, so the bankruptcy benefit for the supplier you're using is tied to initiating a policy within 14 days of initial payment for Allianz. Mm -hmm. And we have a list of covered suppliers that we insure for bankruptcy. The second time sensitive benefit for Allianz is legal separation and divorce. You might say, what, why would that be? Well, the human spirit can be very creative <laughs> and we were getting legal papers drawn up by friends and family members saying people were getting separated in order to cancel a trip and be reimbursed. So we just put a little time frame around that benefit of buy your policy early. Again, before there's an issue with the marriage, hopefully. And then the third one would be coverage for pre-existing medical conditions. So pre-existing medical conditions are a big reason people purchase travel insurance. A lot of people have an, an, a medical issue. Each company has their own definition um, or they really have their own look back. What do they consider a pre-existing condition? Some companies have a 60 day look back. Some have a 180 day. We have a 120 day kind of in the middle. 
Meaning if you have had symptoms, treatment, or a diagnosis in the 120 days before you buy your policy with Allianz, you have a pre-existing condition. Now, if we were an auto insurance company, it would be kind of like you've had a speeding ticket because we know there's a greater likelihood of a claim and we should charge you more because you're a greater risk. We cannot do that. All we can do is say, buy that policy early so that we get the premium in and we're able to put that premium to work in order to pay the claims. Because some you may not know that pre-existing condition coverage is for you, the traveler, the traveling companion, but it also brings into the picture non-traveling family members. So here we've got, um, and it's pretty small. Let me move this over to see if I can, like can there, make this go a little bigger. I'm so glad you brought this in because a lot of people do not know this. Yep. Yeah, so these are the family members. They're not going on the trip at all, but if they are hospitalized or if they need your care, you want to be able to cancel your trip. So here they are. Um, you'll notice cohabitant is a roommate or a domestic partner. Service animals is an Americans with Disabilities Act service animal. So these people, if they're hospitalized or need your, the client's care, that is a reason for trip cancellation and trip interruption. If that's due to their own pre-existing condition, your client needs to have met the pre-existing requirements. Those are outlined on every brochure that we have. Um, and it includes buying the policy on time, being medically able to travel. So even though you've got some health issues, maybe you had an asthma attack last month, you're okay today. And then ensuring all non-refundable trip costs. That's right. The being able to travel today. I don't know if you remember when I booked that it was my second world cruise and the wife had was undergoing cancer treatments at the time. And, and of course, then we were maxing out on the coverage amounts and all of that good stuff. And we had to really think through her whole scenario. She's fine now. And since then, she's booked four more world cruises with me. But the thinking um, through the whole pre-existing and uh, being medically able to travel the day that you purchase the travel insurance was a really important point that you taught me. Um, I want to answer a couple, uh, ask a couple of questions. So let's go back to the commission protection. Okay. Is it 20% no matter what, if the commission is higher? So if, if you're, you're making 25%, they max out at 20. Yes. Okay. Is there an option to purchase travel insurance after the deposit, and I'm going to assume after like your 14 days for the pre-ex, but before final payment. Now, I know certain host agencies have different mm -hmm. uh, models. Right. So can you speak to, one, the purchase of it before final payment, and two, are there any policies out there that would cover pre-ex up to final? Okay, so the majority of what we call our core portfolio, it's within 14 days of deposit. With, um, with another company, it's 15. With another, it's 21. So you just have to familiarize yourself with what their uh, requirement is. But that doesn't, then we have um, clients, agencies that sell a lot of travel insurance with us they may have a plan that allows pre-existing conditions to be covered through final trip payment. Yeah, but, but it's crazy expensive if you try to start finding policies like that. Yeah, these these are not that bad because oh, really? we we have um, a, a very we're getting a lot of volume from the agencies that we give give those plans to. So. With there, we have some um, agencies that have a longer pre-ex window, but mo all of our plans except one, you can purchase up until the day before departure, midnight Eastern. 
So our computers are in Richmond, Virginia, where our company is headquartered. Um, that would be the last opportunity to ensure your, your trip. You'll have every benefit listed, including COVID coverage. P.S. It ain't over. COVID is not over. We are still getting people having to quarantine. So um, you can get all of the benefits listed in that policy, except coverage for pre-existing medical conditions. So let me ask you about other coverages like credit cards, homeowners policies, auto life. Should our clients be relying on policies like that? They like they likely do not have as comprehensive benefit as the benefits that Allianz offers. So let's look at um, a homeowner's policy may be able to reimburse you if you've got uh, something stolen while you're traveling. So they may be able to. Then of course you file a claim with your homeowner's policy and what happens when you're up for renewal? Hey, why did my premium go up? <laughs> well, you filed a claim. Um, that, that does not happen with us. Um, credit card coverage. So I did what I, I advise you to discuss with your clients. I got my credit card renewal. I got a little pamphlet in there about my travel insurance benefits. And one day while I was stuck on the, on the freeway, I just called them and said, hey, I see I've got travel insurance. Tell me about this. What is it? How? What are my covered reasons? They listed about twelve. We have twenty six. Um, I said, "Are uh, what about medical benefits?" Well, no, we don't. We don't pay for medical care. Okay. What about covering pre existing medical conditions for trip cancellation? No, that's a general exclusion. So every single credit card is different. Those that you pay for, those expensive cards they will tend to have better benefits mm -hmm. than the cards that you don't pay for. But um, it's still not anything like what we have. For rental cars, credit cards may have coverage, but um, it may be limited to if you're not at fault. Mm -hmm. What if you're at fault in the accident? There are some credit cards that won't pay. That doesn't matter to us. Um, there may be, um, let's see, something else flashed in my head for credit cards. Um, the, the coverage lower, mm -hmm. we will actually pay the rental agency if you purchase our, our rental car protector. So when it's, when it's free or it's included as a benefit, you can be pretty sure that it's just not going to be as comprehensive as a third party party policy that you choose to pay for. I agree. I've done some comparisons as well. So, and uh, I completely concur with you. Uh, so we have another question about CFAR. It's not CFAR. It's um, with us. It's cancel anytime, anytime, cancel anytime. Right. right. And honestly, the CFAR policies are not even the same as <laughs> pre-COVID, but tell us about cancel anytime. Okay, so I mentioned to you Allianz is an older cons um, insurance and a very long time. I hate to say old because it's not like we're feeble. It's a, it's a <laughs> solid company that's been around for a long time. We know how much risk we want to take. We know the kind of benefits we want to offer. We don't want to offer CFAR. We don't want counsel for any reason. We don't want the risk of some, some issues. We don't want to give people 50% back of their trip cost. So we develop cancel anytime. It's called classic with cancel anytime. Carpe diem, seize the day. Cancel anytime can only be purchased within 14 days of initial payment. It will allow you to be reimbursed 100% for the regular covered reasons. It then goes a step further and says, okay, nine issues are of concern to Allianz. Um, Things like war is, is a general exclusion. Um, you're being convicted of a crime is an exclusion. So we have nine exclusions, but it, you can cancel your trip for personal reasons and be reimbursed 80%. Mm -hmm. 
And for the advisor that sold that policy, if the person does cancel after final payment for an 80% reason, your commission protection is 80%. So 80% of the commission is protected. So what are some examples of our cancel any time plan? Pet issues. My pet had a seizure last night. I don't want to go. Plus, we allow you to cancel up until the time of departure, not only for, before um, 48 hours before departure, where the plan then stops for most of our competitors. Ours goes to the time of departure. So friendship issues, couples issues, you're not married, you broke up, um, you looked at the weather, it's going to be raining all week, you don't want to go, you have to work, you got a new job, all, all kinds of personal issues would get you an 80% refund. So let me ask you a question, because I recently I saw something in a group. Um, where does Allianz step in in the event of like identity theft or stolen passports and credit cards, is this covered uh, okay. through, through Allianz? And, and if so, why, why should we care about this for our customers? Okay, well, I, I good question. Thank you. I brought up on the screen, uh -huh. this, is, um, this is a refresh that we are in the midst of mm -hmm. that started in December for the states that are listed here. So we we march to the drumbeat of 51 departments of insurance mm -hmm. that that approve our benefits and approve our pricing. Mm -hmm. um, one of the uh, one of the new benefits that's live in these states is theft of travel documents. So your passport is stolen with our new plans in 36 states, that is now trip cancellation or tr yeah, trip cancellation coverage. With our older plans, we give you travel delay benefits to allow you to get an emergency passport and then uh, continue on with your trip. So we're moving toward covering the theft of travel documents. It has to be theft of travel documents with a police report filed. It's not, I put it in a drawer and I can't find it. So it's an actual Dude, Florida's not on here. My gosh. You know what? I just had my neighbor. Okay. My neighbor, um, I booked a trip for them. This was last year. It was in the fall and they had a connection and she arrived in Chicago for their overseas flight right. and they asked for her passport and she dropped it in the airport. I remember that. And, oh my gosh, they were texting me. So fortunately, they had people on the ground, someone who was flying to Chicago. So they stayed in Chicago one night, the airline flew the passport to them. And then, but we had a delay in Paris. Mm -hmm. So they lost, yes, remember, and they lost the, the night. And I just think, yeah. <laughs> so, oh my God, anything can happen. Anything. anything can happen. So that's still covered under travel delay. Um, and then um, identity theft, we do not offer. Um, we don't see it as a travel related issue necessarily. It's not a benefit we offer. There is one company I know that covers that. That's Generali. Um, but we, what we don't like to do is provide benefits that we see as fluff benefits where it looks good on paper. I'm not saying that they're doing that, but we like to have benefits that are being claimed. Um, departments of insurance want to see you paying claims. And if they see you not paying claims on certain benefits, they look at that benefit and say, you're just trying to kind of puff yourselves up with this benefit. Um, they, they don't really go for that. So we we don't pay for, for identity theft, just as we don't pay for accidental death and dismemberment benefits. We did away with that about five years ago for the same reason. We were never paying out on people losing an arm on vacation. So um, it's something that we said, okay, if they want that, there's a kiosk at the airport, they can get it. But we try to concentrate on the benefits that people are really using and claiming on. I have a question for you, it just popped into my mind. When travel's rebooked, does the policy, how, how does 
pre-existing condition work. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to move the policy and the original policy already had pre-existing because right. they purchased it in time in, in time to to meet that requirement. Yep. Does that cover over that? Does that move over to the new trip dates? Yeah, it's the same policy. Okay. So all of the benefits that were in there, that policy, you're just picking it up and plopping it down on a different date. So um, our policies are able to be moved for up to 770 days, which is two years and two months. Mm -hmm. During COVID, we made that longer. Um, we made it three years because what's the record of moving trip dates? I think it's five. <laughs> <laughs> Poor advisor is working five times to do what they did once that they earned commission on once and they're they're doing that five times so that same policy stays in play or yeah the policy is the same the benefits are the same now if you want pre-existing condition coverage and that new trip is more expensive you want to increase the coverage to cover your non-refundables okay i'm going to see if there are any other questions i know i told you this was going to be 30 minutes and we're now 40 minutes into this. So I'll take a few questions, but I would like for you uh, to tell us who our members should reach out to based on their region, because you will not be the point of contact right. for everybody who is a TIS member. So can you pop that up? Oh, perfect. There this is. So I managed to fit it on one screen. It may be tiny. Um, here, here you've got Steve with Indiana, Kansas, Kentucky, Michigan, Missouri, Ohio. Um, Pennsylvania in green, it means the state is split. We've got uh, two people handling it. So here I am. I, I work with Arizona and Southern California. But this grid, I can send it to you, uh, Sheila. Mm -hmm. um, this will tell you, and the email formula is first name dot last name at allianz.com. Okay, and I want to clarify this too. Um, it This does not necessarily mean the state in which you operate, but your host agency yes. or your consortia, correct? Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Wherever your host agency is, whoever we're paying our high commission to, that's the person that manages that account. Okay, perfect. Yeah, if you could send this to me, I will add it to the documents inside of our Facebook group. Sure. And that way people can refer to it. Um, before we go, I wanted to, I, I'm not going to promise this because I'm not going to promise something on your behalf, but one of the things that I talk to a couple of uh, our customers about is if you have a larger agency, maybe larger means three agents, five agents, maybe it's 15 agents mm -hmm. that are working underneath your agency, um, reach out to your director, your BDM, because a lot of times they will make time for you to discuss plans in greater detail based on what you sell. Maybe you sell a lot of Disney. Maybe you sell a lot of cruises in the Caribbean. May, you know, how, what are the products that you should be recommending to your clients and how you should go about doing it without stepping over the line of being an insurance agent or diving deep. So I know you did it with us. Right. And um, I'm going to assume yep. these directors will do this elsewhere. Yes, we're all we are all fluent on WebEx, Zoom, Teams, GoToMeeting. <laughs> we're fluent on all of them. And um, we're doing more and more of this because the number of brick and mortar actual physical locations did go down during COVID. So in order to reach our advisor clients, we have to reach out this way. So absolutely, we'd be um, very happy to do that. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Barbara Hearn, Allianz. I really appreciate your time today. I know you are on the road and you want to get over to your <laughs> event. Lunch and learn, yes. That's right, your lunch and learn. 
So thank you so much for everybody. We will uh, put this out on our YouTube channel within the next few days. We will leave it up in our live Facebook group as well, and then we'll transition it over. I just love you, Barbara. You have just changed my life and changed the way that I feel about travel insurance. I have so much confidence oh. in recommending the Allianz products to my customers. In fact, I recently had a back and forth with a client because I sent him quotes from different agencies and he asked me why. I like Allianz. And so I explained to him the service, the payouts. My clients have had zero hiccups. Um, of course, they're honest in the claims that they're making. And um, the, the high touch service and internal knowledge of your team, hands down, is, is worth it. That's great. And the, the Travel Smart app. Oh my gosh. Can't live without that. Yeah. Yeah. We're a big company, but we've got the local touch, which is really nice. So we've got a very tenured sales team with two new people that just joined um, in the Southeast and in the Midwest. So I will be actually going on sales calls with one next week to bring them into the fold, but um, we're, we're, um, we've got a really good sales team. So you, you can count on us being responsive. Great. Thank you. And thank you everybody for being here today. Have a great rest of your day. Take thank care. You. Okay. Bye-bye.